Hey, AP students, let's study how to write a great thesis statement within the next few minutes. Let's start off by looking at the thesis statement formula. As I always teach this to my students. Um, it can start off by looking a little bit uh, overwhelming, um, but I'm going to break it down for you and make a lot of sense. So what does the X stand for in these formulas? That is your counter argument. ABC are your categories of analysis. You're writing a three body paragraph paper with an introductory paragraph and then a conclusion if you can make it to that on the actual exam. And so the ABC part of it should align with those three body paragraphs as in body paragraph one goes with A, two goes with B, and then C should go along with body paragraph number three. Why? Potentially the most important part of the entire paper is your actual argument. What is the point you're trying to make when you're given one of these topics? So the argumentation part is just so important. Personally, I like to use thesis formula number two when I'm writing and if, or if I was planning to write one of these particular papers. So um, it's completely up to you which one you want to choose and then start to plug in your ideas as you brainstorm these type of essays. If you're going to make a very positive argument, I like to think with your counterpoint by starting with writing about something very negative about whatever the topic may be. And then if you have a negative argument, I like to do the exact opposite. Start off by saying something positive and then go into your argumentation with your three reasons. So there are three potential types of essays that you will have on the actual APUSH exam. They target the big three thinking skills of causation, comparison, and continuity and change over time. Let's look at the first thinking skill, the historical thinking skill of causation. Personally, I feel like this one is the easiest of the three, but it can be a little bit tricky if you don't pay attention to the wording of the actual question. So essentially what you're doing in a causation type of essay is you're telling me what is the most significant cause of something. Or it could be what is the most significant effect of something. Or the third layer in this is, well, what is more significant, causes or the effects of World War I? Now, this doesn't work every single time, but more times than not, you're going to see the effects are going to be more significant than causes. So please think about that as you begin developing a thesis statement. So I'm not going to read through all of these examples, but take a look at this one. Here's one from World War I. The complex split thesis statement before you is what we're trying to build up to, where you have your counter argument, you have your categories of analysis, and then by the end of it is talking about these causes are the most significant reasons for why World War I even happened. How about we move on to an effects question? Again, remember, you're essentially doing the same thing. The main effects of World War I included these two things, but perhaps the most significant of them was this. So take a look at an example. This one's from the early U.S. history, talking 1600s, 13 colonies. You begin with your counter argument first that rocky soil and cold winters in New England resulted in an economy that was based on small farms settled by families with relatively small numbers of slaves. However, the dominant control of Puritan clergy and the lax control of the colonies allowed New England to develop political independence. So you're starting to see all the parts of that particular formula starting to, to form up with that one. Body paragraphs, just as a reminder, your topic sentence is the first sentence in a body paragraph. It ties back to whatever the thesis statement may be. It introduces the category and takes a position with it. And usually you want to start off with your most significant cause well, or, or effect or whatever you may choose. That needs to be the first body paragraph that you have. Looking for three to five pieces of SFI specific factual information, aka key terms, per paragraph. And then think about also talking about level two type of writing. Um, what led to something happening? What led what, as a consequently as a result? Those type of phrases and words can really make your essay turn out great. Comparison. Essentially, what you're doing with a comparison essay is you're saying, um, well, what is more significant, the similarities between uh, two events or the differences between two, two events? So let's take a moment to consider um, this. And remember, as you write these to show how they are most significant as you go along with it. So here's a prompt. Let's go with evaluate the extent to which geography was the primary factor in shaping the development of one of the following regions of the 1600s, New England, the Middle Colonies, or the Southern Colonies. 
A good example of this using the thesis statement formulas might resemble something like this. The 17th century economics, the middle and southern colonies were similarly shaped by the river systems and deep harbors, such as New York and Charleston, which allowed both to develop agrarian export economies. Here we get into our argumentation point, though. However, the warmer southern climate led to more labor-intensive crops that created a larger demand for a source of cheap workers. So this one's trending more towards, well, the differences were more significant than the similarities between the two regions. Body paragraph for comparison essays. Each topic sentence, again, has to address a category of comparison. Categories can be based both on the major themes or sub-themes of the course, such as religion, politics, migration, or economics. Same thing, three to five pieces of SFI key terms per paragraph. And be thinking um, about that as you go through your essay. Last one, last historical thinking skill, continuity and change over time. I can tell you right off the bat, one of the easiest things for students to do is talk about what changed over time. But a lot of students tend to forget to talk about well, what stayed the same throughout time in a particular essay prompt. So essentially you're trying to do this. What is the mo what is more significant? The continuities of a topic or an era or the changes over time? So the most significant continuities involving whatever the topic, the question is, or at least these two things. However, the, the more significant changes involving uh, World War I, World War II, or at least these two things. So I hope you see the argumentation part of it as well. So prompt here we have one on the civil rights movement. Let's start off with a counter argument. Although violent clashes with police and discrimination persisted throughout the civil rights movement, the movement was an overall success due to the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 64 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. So essentially, again, you're, you're just talking about, well, what is the more significant part? Body paragraphs over continuity and change over time. Each topic sentence should address an aspect of continuity or change, same thing, three to five pieces as FS, SFI in key terms, and you should be in pretty good shape. Think about this. You don't have to do this on your own, but it could be helpful. Um, here are some practice prompts. Look into the three thinking skills that you might have with comparison, um, causation, and then continuity and change over time. So take a look at these three essay questions and think to yourself, could you write down a thesis statement using those formulas at the very beginning of this video to make a great argument um, dealing with these three topics if you have the content knowledge to go along with it. All right, so I hope that was helpful. Please let me know if you still have questions. Thanks for watching.